let's start with uh, it's Jackie Robinson Day all around Major League Baseball. Everybody's wearing number 42. Beyond Jackie Robinson Day, it's the 75th anniversary uh, of when he broke into the big leagues, which obviously is huge. And um, today, though, in New York, uh, they also unveiled the Tom Seaver statue in front of City Field. The statue is phenomenal. Beautiful. One of the one of the better ones I've seen, Rob. I really oh, feel no. that way. They're all and, nice. And, and they really captured. The That's Tom Seaver's motion. Yep. You know, Chris, and, and I grew up, you know, in Queens, and I used to take the number seven train, the E train to the number seven train, to, to, to the old Shea Stadium, me and my buddies, all my friends we grew up with in the neighborhood. My team was called the Black Cats, Chris, for $5 in those days. Racist. We'd go see what? Because they were called the Black Cats? Racist. <laughs> I, I just, what, what, why they, was that your team? That was your little league name? It was our uh, neighborhood team, the Black Cats. That's got to be so racist. So y'all made that name up? Yes. Did you and, play little league? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was that was the team before Little League started. Like but anyway, just your team in your little neighborhood. In the neighborhood back then, right, yeah, right. you know that. You used to have teams like right. that. Um, but but in those days, we used to go watch Tom Seaver pitch. When he pitched, Mets had a chance to win, so it was a big deal when Which he was, was a pitching. Rarity. Exactly back <laughs> in the seventies, it was it was tough, and um, so I love the statue. I love everything about it. He should be honored. He's one of the greatest, the greatest Met. Um, and he's a Hall of Famer. I, I can't say anything negative about Tom Seaver because he was that great. Right. But right. today the Mets made a mistake. Today was not Tom Seaver's day, Chris. It was Jackie Robinson Day. And Bud Selig, a number of years ago, decided to do this when they retired every, you know, every number 42 on every team. Everybody today is wearing the 42, even in the Dodgers colors. Chris, no matter what color your uniform is, I mean, it's a special, special yeah. day. It's not just about baseball. And for you long, younger listeners, you need to just take a couple of minutes and really Google and watch something and find out about Jackie Robinson and what he meant and where this country was in 1947. Chris, it's 20 years before the Civil Rights Movement. You know how bad it was to be a black man in, in this country in 1947? Yeah, pretty. Rob, I, I always say, I mean, obviously, you can't overstate what Dr. Martin Luther King and all the civil rights titans did, but you got to give props to Jackie Robinson and, and other black athletes of that era. Yep. Because what they did to, uh, you know, move African-Americans into the mainstream, that can't be overstated either. Like, without Jackie Robinson, that, that was a major part of race relations. It, there it are was. no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like, you, people might say, oh, it was just a game, it's just a sport, some of the people no. don't even watch right now. That was humongous. It can't be overstated. And, and the one thing is, which I loved in the movie 42. And if you want to, you know, if, if you haven't seen the whole story or you don't know Jackie Robinson's story, Chris, that's a good movie to watch, 42. Right. Oh, yeah. It really is. Entertaining and, as well as informative. And, right, both. And the thing I loved the most was they didn't try to make Br Branch Ricky out to be a saint, right. that he was going to change the world, Chris. He saw all these black people walking around Brooklyn and none were at his ball game. Right. None. Right. Seriously. Right. And he's like, what? these people are walking by. They got money. What, what, what yep. are we doing? Yep. And he wanted to sell tickets. And they went and they got, and there were teams that, that wanted to pull out of the league, didn't want to play against Brooklyn the whole nine yards. And Jackie had to turn the, uh, his, the other cheek and deal with a lot. There's no doubt he, he had a premature death, Chris, from the stress and How old he was he when through. he died, roughly? Uh, I've got to look at it again. I don't have the exact number. Yeah, uh, but but he did But die, you know he died young. You felt he died prematurely. Yeah. Hey, it's easy to look it up. I, yeah, I'll yeah, look yeah. it up now. But um, his widow's still alive. She, and I she believe, is right? amazing. Yeah, She's going yeah. she to turn 100 years old, Chris. Oh, yeah. He was 53, Rob. Yeah, he was young. Wow. I didn't remember he was that young. He was young. Yeah. She's 100. Yeah, that's my age. She's going to be 100, Chris. Wow. Wow. I'm almost positive. Yeah, because he be. was born in 1919. 
Look at her. Yeah, look so at, she look probably at Rachel. is going to be. Yeah, I think Rachel Robinson is going to be a hundred this year, which is um, and she's she's great wow. looking. Wow. She she looks wonderful. She does that that that. Wow. Am I right? Yeah, because I've seen her within the last few years. You know, at at a game or, or some ceremony. And uh, Chris, wow, Ju- July nineteenth. 1922. She's going to be 100 on July 19th. That's incredible. And so she's lived 50 years essentially without Jackie. Yep. Wow. Wow. Yeah, um and that's 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 powerful, Rob. Cuz I had forgotten he died that young, but the stress on him and for him he had to be I even hate that he had to go through this cuz he should be able to he should have been able to just show the the full range of human emotion. Right. Right? If he's angry, he can be angry. But if he, he doesn't be. like that somebody right. called him this or that, he could show. Like, that's what human beings, are, are, regardless of your race, should be able to do. Not that you're just running off going crazy, but, you know, like, you're human. And he couldn't be that while he was playing baseball. He had to always be... At his A plus game, right? I don't mean playing, although he had to perform as well. But he think Rob, we talk about the pressures on athletes today, and there are pressures on them. But he not only he had to go out there and play great baseball because he was representing a whole segment of the country, a whole race of people, and, and, and everybody Chris, was looking at him yep. as the example. And the end all for what blacks can and can't do. That's exactly what was on his plate. And black people flocked to the ballpark, Chris. When Jackie Robinson came to town, it became, you know, a part of uh, black culture. And some of the owners, I remember reading the Tigers had a racist owner, Chris, who would quadruple the price of the tickets to try to stop black people from coming in when, like, Larry Doby, who was right. a black player for the uh, Cleveland uh, Indians, you know, and was the second black player in the major right. leagues. Like, when black players came to Detroit, he would, like, like instead of it being 50 cents, it's 250 to get in. Like, stuff like that. Well, well, Rob, this is often talked about. You know this. Our good friend Bill Roden wrote from the new formerly of the New York times. Uh, he was a colleague of mine there when I worked there, he wrote the book, $40 million slaves. And in his book, he kind of lamented, you know, you had the Negro leagues back. Then. Right. Um, and some great, I mean, obviously you look at the, the contributions of African-Americans to the game of baseball, you know, it was great, you, you know, cause all the great black players would have been in the Negro Leagues at that time. Right. So you know, you know it was Hank just Aaron as good. played in the Negro League. Yeah, and then went yeah. to the Major League and, and look what he did. And you know, Rob, that the story is that Jackie Robinson was not the best player in the Negro League. No, he But was he was not. the one that they felt had the personality and the demeanor and the credentials because of his education and everything. He went to, to UCLA. You know, right. Yep. And he was, he was I very, hate to even put it this way, to be acceptable. Yep. White America. I hate to even put it that way, but, but that's, that's, the where, that's the truth. He right. wasn't the best player, right? Right. And, and and he went and lit it up in Major League Baseball. But Rob, people look at it, and and I know it's hindsight now, but you had obviously blacks in high places in the Negro League. Sure, they were general managers, managers. Right. They owned they, teams. Yeah, they were doing all that. Do you think, and again, it's easy to say in hindsight, but some people say it would have been better had they been able to negotiate instead of just letting Jackie, you know, here, okay, Jackie Robinson's going in and suddenly soon more other players were going in and the Negro Leagues obviously disbanded. Right. Could they have negotiated like, you know, okay, a merger, even though obviously they didn't have the – stature and the clout that the major leagues had but could they have done something like that and we're I, just fantasizing right, right now I, but I don't, you know I don't, where you would have right. had more blacks in higher places 
I don't think so in 1947, Chris, because of what we were just talking about, civil rights and how black people, you're talking about separate water fountains. They aren't going to come to the table and sit with black people and say, oh, yeah, you know, we'll pay you for Jackie and we'll put a, a Negro League team in the American Like, Like, no. Like, I, I, I'm with you. It would have been a great thing, but I don't think at that time it was. It would have been difficult. It, it yes. might have been. I mean, yeah, it would have been. You're right. It would have been, been like, yeah. I mean, a, 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 almost a completely black team in the in Major League Baseball would have been, you know, it would have caused craziness. But money talks, you know, and they, like you said, Branch Rickey wanted that black money. He did. He you was know, in Brooklyn. And again, I, I, I totally get it. It is easy to say in hindsight. So I'm not saying they should have done it. You know, no, you no, all say no. they should have done it, but it's easy to say right now. But it, it's just, you know, when you think about the things we talk about, not only in baseball, but all the sports, lack of black managers, lack of black coaches, lack Front of black owners, people. obviously no owners, uh, or very few owners. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's where... It would have been nice had it been able to be more of a partnership. Now, we would have had to stand up and demand it because they weren't going to give it to us for sure. Um, but, you know, it's just something to think about uh, when, when you look at situations like this. Rob, I got a quick story, too. Yep. My dad, I don't, I don't know if I ever shared this with you. My dad actually studied to be a priest, a Catholic he, priest. A Catholic priest, yeah. really? So for two years in high school... Two of his years, he went to seminary, Catholic seminary. Wow. To be a priest. And he was, you know, he was there two years. He's popular. I, I've looked at all his photos. He was an athlete. Right. You know, had a lot of friends and all that. And one of just a handful out of like 150 guys, only a couple African Americans. I was going to say, it couldn't have been. If that, be a priest I think, back right. Your dad if might have been. Even, I don't know I if he was the only one. He right. might have been one of two, Chris. You right. Know, oh, yeah. Honest. Right. Or maybe that maybe the only one for all I know. But he, so he's a junior. So he spent his sophomore and junior year there. He's a junior. And one day he's in the gym. And a freshman says to him, Bruce R., why are you so dark? My dad's slightly, slightly darker than me. And my dad says, maybe it's because I'm colored. You know, at that time. Right, the, that's, the what, 50s, you, that's what you colored, identified right. yourself. Right. right. And he said later that day, everybody was shunning him. Just he like thought that. they knew he was black. He thought they knew he was black. And they but didn't know until they that, didn't. They didn't, know didn't know. that point. Right. And so guys he was friends with. Stop talking cool to him. with teammates on the, yeah, stop, start shunning him, start giving him the cold shoulder. Oh, I They're didn't having know a conversation. Story. He walks up to him. They leave, like all that. Oh, wow. So after two weeks of this, because, you know, they lived on the campus. Right. Two weeks of this is he calls his parents. They come up, and he's sitting in the car with his dad and mom crying. Right. And one of his best friends who was black came there with him. And he's telling them what happened, and he's crying. And he, his dad, my grandfather, says to him, son, everybody can't be Jackie Robinson. Wow. Come on home. Is that That's right? He, that, yep. That, and he went home and... Now, I'm thankful he didn't become a priest. Right. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> you, you know, know what? Know. I don't think you would be around. That right, would be a, right. I would be, be around. If he was a good a, priest, I wouldn't. Right. That would be a pretty liberal order if he was <laughs> a priest. Yeah. And wait a minute. You're a priest. Right. How many kids do you have? Right, 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 oh. right, right. So it worked out. But, yeah, that's that's, wow. that's the story, man. That's and, a big and, story. And that, just like that, everybody can't be Jackie Robinson. Yep. Wow. Yep. That's what he said. To him. That's a great wow. story.